Oh, before. I like it. Exactly. It's really okay. nice. So, having beers today. Oh, okay. cheers. Cheers. I'm Coco. I'm Marika. And we're Serial Serial Knitters. Knitters. This is a podcast about knitting, mostly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have yet to finish a sewing project. Right, yeah. Or any other project that's not knitting-based. Yeah, we're just going to stick with knitting. (laughs) This is about knitting. Um, We've got two dogs in the room. Mm -hmm. Gordon is doing his thing. Argus is chewing on a thing. Mm -hmm. We'll see. My neighbors leave might have a bit of a ruckus but <laughs> last time there were so many edits <laughs> because the dogs are just popping off yeah it's been a it's been a b- little bit mm-hmm. since we did this last so yeah. uh but take a you're wearing mm. an amazing new piece finished object mm-hmm. shall we go straight in yeah let's do it okay this is the swing back by Stephen West so we've discussed previously how I um, don't do well with shawls mm-hmm. because I don't fully understand how to keep them wrapped around me. Uh, although those little shawl clasp things uh-huh. made out of leather that people are coming out with mm-hmm. really seem like they would be helpful. But mm-hmm. So I've been interested in doing a Stephen West uh, pattern because everybody's so enthusiastic about him, but... I knew it probably wasn't going to be a shawl. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the other ones are are very scrappy projects. Um, So I had a linen. This is Handmaiden Fleece is the name of it. It's not a fleece. It's F-L-Y-S-S. And it is a hand-dyed linen and silk blend Mm -hmm. that... You know, it's not very often you see somebody doing hand-dyed linen. And honestly, there's not so much to it that you would really think it's hand-dyed. Yeah, there's like a subtle variation, but it's not crazy. I think some of the other, um, some of the other colorways Mm -hmm. are more obvious that they're Mm hand-dyed. But, um, this is usually a very expensive yarn. It's like $44 a skein. And I got it on one of, like, the big Lovecraft um, sales, like Mm -hmm. the 60% off sale. Mm -hmm. So it's the only time I've ever seen this yarn in the 20, like, in the range where it starts with a 2 at the beginning of the number. (laughs) So although um, I just felt like it was, like, the one time I could buy it, and if I didn't buy it then, then I was never going to get to try this yarn Mm because... $44 $44 a skein for not cashmere is kind of uh, a lot. So, um, one, I got this very at a very reasonable price. And then um, I'll just stand up to show you guys. You stripe it with mohair. Mm-hmm. He calls for a worsted weight linen, and this is a, a fingering weight. I think, but mm-hmm. I did it on um, size nine, so I just did it to pattern and knew that it was going to be like a more open weave, mm-hmm. which is fine. And then the mohair is a Shibui cloud in black, and I had bought it to do the, what was that one called? The flown. So, mm-hmm. And you were trying to hold I never it with it. other things, <laughs> yeah. and it just wasn't I tried to out. hold it with this cotton that was uh is it called like a buclo or something like that when it's got like little nubs in it Mm -hmm. anyways it was a nubby cotton with the with in a like a purpley color Mm -hmm. with the black mohair Mm -hmm. it was heinous (laughs) it was the worst combination oh i forgot to bring my love note which is another Mm -hmm. terrible combination that i've done with mohair that, was that with the green mohair? Yes. Yeah. It's bad. If I leave it, it's... I got so deep into that love note. Uh-huh. 
I got all the way through like the first repeat of the lace, which gets you down mm-hmm. to like here. And that was when you were holding it with that like kind of nude color with the green flex. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's we're going off on a tangent, but that's mm-hmm. after trying to hold it with, um, I tried to hold it with this. Mm-hmm. I tried to hold it with a, uh, with another silver linen. And it's this bright green. I'll show it next time. But it's this really bright green. Or maybe I can pop a picture in of what's mm-hmm. going on there. But it's it's terrible. I cannot figure out what goes with this green. Yeah. We, what we were discussing the other day, because I bought this, like, mint mohair that I've been trying to figure out what to do with. Right. And, like, you think you hold two colors together and you're like, oh. I like this one color. I like this one color. I, I like, like this, this color. Other. They seem to complement each other. So if I hold them together, it's going to be like out of this world. And then you do your test swatch and you're like, this is the most disgusting color I've ever seen in my life. Yes. And neither one of us um, have figured out what the correct formula is <laughs> for holding different colors together, like holding a mohair with something else. In, if it's not the same color. Yeah, I think sometimes, I think we know what's safe. Right. Like, we know, I know if I held that green with another green, it would be fine. But I don't but... want to do what's safe. I want to do, like, what is more adventurous. And so I'm coming up with really, really terrible. <laughs> but I feel like also it's, like, not every type of green is going to work with that. Because you tried it with, like, another green and it didn't work either. It was okay. But okay. Yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was just, like, meh. Uh-huh. Because it was a, it's Joshua Tree is the colorway, Madeline Tosh is the yarn. Mm-hmm. It's a little, like, it's cactusy green. It's a little yellow, mm-hmm. and the green of the mohair is a little more emeraldy true green. Mm-hmm. So, it was, but it, it would be fine. It was just a little. But, yeah, so if you're not holding it with, a color of a, the same base color kind of mm-hmm. what is the formula for combining a mohair with a different colored yarn yeah we haven't quite cracked that yet <laughs> i think i'm just always trying to push the bounds is really my mm-hmm. issue like the ranunculus i did where it was a like a kind of a beigey tonal mm-hmm. with the lavender and pink flecked mm-hmm. mohair like I knew immediately like this is gonna be fine because they both have kind of like a you know tones of white mm-hmm. so it'll just cut that down but I was intentionally trying to offset how green that green mm-hmm. is and it it's it refuses to be offset yeah it's like this is what I am uh-huh. so anyways doing that process I had purchased this yarn and I had no idea what I was going to be making with it which we discussed we were talking last week we were going to a yarn shop and we were like making a commitment now to (laughs) to only purchase yarn with a project in mind Mm -hmm. because whenever we try to make something or we buy the yarn and then like don't have an idea of what we're going to do with it Mm -hmm. uh we you know they just take up space okay so I bought this yarn I didn't have any idea what I was going to do with it Mm -hmm. um And so when I was doing the love note, I was trying to work this yarn in. And I was like, it's not working. Mm -hmm. Like, it just, I kept getting this aquamarine color when I was mixing that green with the, with this kind of steely gray. Mm -hmm. And I just realized, like, I don't really like that tone for me. I'm not an aquamarine kind of person I guess Mm. which this is a fascinating thing you know knitting your own clothing Mm -hmm. is it really does help you define like what is your color palette because um I think sometimes I buy yarn without thinking about how that color palette relates to like my body like do I like that color on my body Mm. and that's where I ended up with this green mohair Mm. that thought never crosses my mind when I buy yarn yeah I'm like um I probably should, but I'm like, do I, I feel like, is this a crazy color is kind of the first thought when I'm buying yarn. Like, do I not see this color very often in clothing, you know, and in this type of clothing? And mm-hmm. if the answer is yes, it's not very common, then I buy it. I think that's how you ended up with that, uh, 
that chickeny yellow you got. The green yellow yeah, the, thing? The, um, yeah, the cattail silk from Pearl Soho. Yeah. Yeah, that I'm like, ooh, I don't like it anymore. Because uh, that was one of the ones, too, where I was like, I think this will go with that mint mohair, and then I knitted it up, and it was like, the, I, sh- I showed it on a previous episode, the test swatch, and it was just the worst, like, baby blanket pastel combo. Just awful. Um, so now I'm going to make a t-shirt, a Pearl Soho t-shirt out of the cattail silk. And, just alone. Yeah, just by itself. But knitting it up, it's like, at, at first it seemed like it was kind of this, like, pastel lime green mm-hmm. but now the more and more i work and sit with it it's just yellow like a but pale, a greeny but, yellow but even like i don't know i'm getting like no green out of it anymore it's no? just like yellow so that might be one that i end up dying after i'm after the garment's done yeah because it's just the color's not punchy enough for me you know yeah and it's not neutral enough either it's like this weird in-between ground color that I just don't like so we'll see what happens yeah I had to I had started the t-shirt and it's like you have to do short rows because it's got this like uh it's bottom up and you have um like a little tail uh both in the front and the back so okay so the tangent I went down was basically uh oh so I was knitting the shirt and um got all the way through all the short rows for the front and back portions of the shirt and started knitting the round and realized it was twisted oh and at that point it was far enough where i was like i just gotta rip it all out so um i have to start that one over you know when i was doing my um when i was doing that herrera i twisted it the first time Mm. and the second time i was so afraid that i was gonna do it again that Mm. i knit flat the first like couple of rows mm. just so then when I joined it it was so clear it was very clear mm-hmm. you know that it wasn't um twisted and then um I just seamed that those couple of rows mm. down on the bottom uh because I did a um an i-cord mm. cast on mm-hmm. and I was like I'm not doing it again <laughs> like well I <laughs> took I, so long I did um my cast cast on obsession of the moment is the Chinese waitress cast on Mm -hmm. and that one is not a quick cast on and that's what I cast on the bottom of this t-shirt for because it gives like a very clean even um cast on line that's uh reversible it's pretty much the same on both sides um and it's got a little bit of stretch to it but it also you know maintains its structural integrity pretty well but yeah, I was I was really disappointed about that. And I thought I was so good. I was like, I thought I was really good. Like I hadn't twisted it. I went through. I was like, there's no, I've never twisted anything. I'll be fine. Blah 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 blah. Three days later, you were like, rip it all oh, out. No. Oh no. Ugh. So, but yeah, okay, back I to think, this guy. Yes, um. but I think this is very <laughs> successful. I like it a lot. So I went into. So this yarn started with no point no like project I, I knew I was going to do. I had two skeins mm-hmm. of uh, the fleece, handmade in fleece. Uh, it has very generous um, yardage. I think it was like 487 and the pattern called for just like 120 or so yards more than I had mm-hmm. to make this. So, I was playing yarn chicken, but then I ended up with, like, a good ball left still. Mm. And I was fully going to make, like, tiny little sleeves. Mm -hmm. And um, my husband was like, you always make your stuff too short. Why don't you try to make it the right size? Mm. And I was like, "Uh, well, I'm afraid I'm going to run out of yarn. And he was like, well... How about you just make it the right size on the one arm, and then if you end up short on the other one, then you can pull this one back and, like, make some choices. And I was like, okay, fine. And he was totally right, because I ended up with so much extra yarn, I could have, um, I think I shortened, like, a couple of, I could have gone a couple of, um, rows longer in the body, 
and I shortened that up, which means I have like tons left over. I don't know what it's some magic happened, and I ended up with a bunch of extra. Well, do you think it's because you were knitting on such a larger needle size? No, what uh, I knitted it to the pattern's recommended needle size, uh -huh. but using fingering weight instead of worsted weight. And you still got gauged that way? And I still got gauged that way. Okay. Then I don't know what happened. Yeah. It was fine. Um, so, the pattern was very good. It's got this, like, extra bit of, this extra little decorative flap mm -hmm. in the, at the top. And then, um, yeah, it's like, dolman sleeve or whatever it's drop shoulder mm -hmm. kind of a thing so as soon as you separate for the body i mean as soon as you separate these you're way down almost to your elbow mm -hmm. well with how much this is draping mm -hmm. and then um the trickiest thing was <laughs> weaving on all the ends of the mohair because mm -hmm. each of the stripes i broke the yarn mm -hmm. and um mohair is just a little it's a little tricky to feel like it's getting woven in correctly but mm -hmm. um the thing with the linen is i feel like you can like take your needle and go through the linen and break kind of like the stitches up mm -hmm. and you feel like it kind it's of catching. grabs more mm -hmm. so great this is a linen and silk blend so it's warmer than i expected it to be mm -hmm. it is actually despite looking like netting mm -hmm. because i also run hot it's almost a transitional like mm. into spring mm -hmm. wardrobe piece for mm -hmm. me because I think by the time it's summer I can't wear this like mm. it's it's a little too warm um and nothing to do with the mohair since that's all on the stomach but mm -hmm. uh I think it's a good it's a good like throw on after yoga yeah kind of look that's a really good good looking sweater I like the the drop tail in the back Excuse all the, uh, <laughs> the dog hair I'm sure I've got, but it's got this oh, yeah. like, little mm -hmm. tail, mm -hmm. and he shows it as, like, you can, it's got these eyelets in the back. I don't know if you can see them. There's just, like, little eyelets, mm -hmm. and they show in the pattern, like, you can string a cord through it to kind of, like, s cinch the sweater in a bit, because oh, really? it is a little flowy, but I think I would just leave it as it is. So, first time, like, properly long sleeves. Mm -hmm. I, go, I went all the way Past down the guys. wrist. All the way to, like, um, yeah. first all, knuckles. Almost, yeah. And uh, I did this super quick. Again, mm -hmm. work is crazy. I could not figure out the baubles in that minaret that I started and got all the way down to the just that last chart where you have to, like, do bobbles and then cross the the little ridges going all the way down. Mm -hmm. I couldn't manage it. Like, I, I don't know. I just was like, I cannot learn one new thing. This, <laughs> so I knit this whole sweater to avoid having to learn how to do the bobbles. Mm. So this is the swing back from um, Stephen West. And uh, I would suggest it, of course. It's a good pattern. Yeah. I don't know... What, if you don't like knitting and linen, mm -hmm. I don't know what would be a good option to knit this in. Because mm. he knits it in linen, and mm -hmm. mine looks pretty similar. I just did black stripes instead of the, um, he did white stripes in mm -hmm. his. I th I've seen a couple of people who knit theirs in a, a DK, but I think it would be quite, quite warm. Mm -hmm. This is cool. quite warm. Yay! Nice. That's my finished object. Woohoo! Um, I have a mostly finished object. Um, so I had this alpaca, this blue alpaca was left over from my um, Ramblin' Woman sweater. Right. You and were very pro this yarn. Yeah, I love it. I love it so much. Um, I cannot remember who makes it ever, but um, <laughs> I think it's like Yarnell's Choice DK. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I can look it up. I love this yarn. I have the, the tag in my little book. Um, and then uh, have this 
Blue Sky, um, Metallico, which is a alpaca silk blend. Did I give you this, or was this one that you well, had? Well, I bought one, because I was like, this feels amazing. Oh my god, I love this so much. And I was like, roll into alpaca at the time. Um, partially because of this blue yarn. And then you were like, then we made the, um, the RBG sweater, and you were like, I can't handle alpaca. Here's all the alpa alpaca I own. I was so, um, <laughs> maybe it was like I went too far, but I was so mad at that alpaca mm -hmm. that I was like, I don't even want it. Like, take it. Yeah. Take whatever get, I have. Get all of the alpaca out of my house. And so you had, coincidentally, another skein of the blue sky in the same color I did yeah. which is lucky because I thought oh I'll make my dad a hat I'll, my dad is um like I have a mild wool allergy my dad has a much more intense wool allergy and so he's been looking for a winter hat and I was like I'll make you one out of alpaca and silk so hopefully you know it won't be itchy for you um and so I chose to do the Oslo hat by Petit Knit and I thought, oh, it'll be great. I'll use one skein of the blue sky, and then I'll use the rest of this um, yarnel, and then it'll, you know, I'll use everything up. It'll be great. And not realizing the way that the hat was constructed, I'm basically knitting like two and a half hats, or using two and a half hats worth of yarn to do this. So this is like one and three quarter skeins of the blue sky, in addition to. The yarn out. Although, were they full skeins of yarn? I thought they were like, kind of like tails or like mini skeins. They How were like those little it? braided ones. Let me see okay, so that's not so bad. It's not like, it's not like it's a 420 yards. No, but 146 yards. So, you know, still taking like almost 300 yards plus whatever I had left of the other one. Like that seems like a lot for a hat. At least to me, having never knit a hat before this one. Um. <laughs> well, you, you, this, this does seem like a lot of knitting for this hat. So this is the Oslo hat. I don't know if we said it mm -hmm. um, by Petite Knit. Right. And so I have to go back and fix some things because I, okay, there are a lot of problems with this. So you knit it from the bottom up. And so um, originally I started with just this blue stripe at the bottom. I started with that and then transitioned into the silver and then... I got all the way up here and um okay so I'm all tangled now um so what I did originally was I cast on this blue first and then work up you work all the way up and then you um have to fold the brim but the, the way the brim is folded the way I did it with the blue at the bottom the blue would then be hidden within the hat and you'd never see it so then I had already gotten most of the way up the crown at that point so what I did is I finished the crown and then went through and from this point ripped all the way back to this point and then picked up the stitches put the blue in the middle and then finished off with the silver so now when you finish the hat it'll have a blue brim at the bottom probably with a little bit of silver and then the silver on the top mm. um but the problem was um i had used the chinese waitress cast on originally which was nice and stretchy down here but now that this is not the cast on edge it's the cast off edge i just did a traditional cast off it's too tight i can't get the hat on my head now <laughs> so i have to rip out the cast off and figure out a stretchier cast off to use so this thing is gonna fold so i don't know i don't want to like give away her whole pattern here okay that's fair but, but it basically is like a double fold so you fold here and then you fold up like that so the finished hat will look like somewhat like that okay so the what i just wanted to get to was like where in the piece is your cast on landing the, the and cast it's on kind of land like at the right bottom. where the yeah right where you put your head through right and okay. so right now it's so tight like i can't fit it over my head like no <laughs> So um, I have to <laughs> rip that out and figure that out, and then hopefully this will be done. This hat has been, like, weeks. It I has thought, been. I thought it would be a week. I'd be in. I'd be out. Done. Check it off. You started it before so, I started this. So much work for this tiny little hat, and I'm like, never again. 
<laughs> Never again this hat. Yeah. Maybe someday another hat. Right. But, okay. yeah, so that's my quasi-finished object. Um, yeah. Okay. So, I got some half-finished objects. Mm -hmm. So, I've got one sock. I think I might have shown this last time. Maybe. Um, this is the furrow sock. I believe it's a free pattern. Um, and it's, as I said before, it's kind of like a lesser version of not lesser not like diminutive but mm -hmm. just like less uh intricate than the coffee talk sock that i did before but still giving me the um the padding on the top because mm -hmm. i'm gonna wear it with doc martens i think we talked about this before mm -hmm. so this is the patents croy in cascade available at michael's <laughs> very nice uh, and I cast on the second sock, so I'm on my way. I'm gonna make it. <laughs> We're gonna get there. Um, I just love this colorway. I love the fade. I like the... I like these kinds of greens, I think. Mm. Greens and blues. Mm. Which is kind of aqua-y, mm -hmm. but for some reason that mohair green is not it. Yeah. So I did... What happened was I purchased one skein of this and then I didn't realize that one skein is not enough to make two socks which I've used patent croy before I don't know why I forgot mm -hmm. that it's not enough I didn't even check it mm -hmm. so I had to go buy another skein and in the meantime while I was waiting mm -hmm. I finished a completely different sock <laughs> <laughs> so this is the um, winter's frost and it doesn't have an apostrophe it's just Winters, like winters plural, and then frost. Hmm. Fun facts. Um, I don't know who it's by, but I'll put that information up. Mm -hmm. um, what is new about this sock to me is it is going to be a sock where there's a specific right and a left. So here there's a lace pattern, and it is it would be, you know, on this side for the right side. So this is the left sock. And this one I did in leftover knit picks hawthorn um this is a a tonal and then this one i can't remember what the name is of it might be like something to do with downtown i'll look it up and i'll put it in here anyway so i hate this color like i the really hate the top color and i'm probably that probably did not it was blurry most likely because you've warned me before i can't get close to the camera anyways <laughs> um there's just something about like the this it has black flecks in it and i think because of the black flecks it's caused the white to be like kind of a gray white so it's a little dingy it's a little dingy and when i was thinking about knit I, initially i thought the whole sock was going to be in that color and when i was thinking about doing that i got to about a little bit before this point and i was like i don't want a pair of socks in this I, like i don't want a whole pair of socks mm -hmm. that just always look dirty mm -hmm. so then i had this leftover pink and I was like okay I'm gonna do the whole bottom in this bright pink and now I've got to attempt to get the second one to match because I did not make any notes so I'm gonna have to count this out and figure out exactly when I made the switch but if they don't exactly match okay. it's fine no one's nobody's gonna, gonna notice. notice yeah so um just a standard top-down sock with a heel flap and gusset yeah, it's a cute little pattern. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think it really pops that well. Let me try it on the sock blocker just to see. I don't think it it pops super well, but maybe once it's blocked, it'll show up better. Mm. It definitely helps. I don't know. So it's just got this pattern. It's very memorizable, which was great mm -hmm. for me. At that point in my life, it makes you feel like you really accomplished something, but it, it didn't take too much brain power. Mm. Nice. Two half-finished objects. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, what am I doing? I still have the nightingale still underway. Mm -hmm. I can show you where I'm at with the sock, or the sleeve. Um... 
is where we're at right now. You knit it flat? Yeah, you knit it flat, and then you Ooh, seam it. That's got to be a little bit painful, right? Yeah, it's kind of a pain in the ass. It's not, like, there's nothing, um, there aren't any cables in the sleeve. It's just, um... A rib? Yeah, like a variated rib, and then you, you know, it, it adjusts as you come up. So you're, you're, um, making, I don't remember, I haven't worked on this in a while. But the <laughs> rib shifts as you move up the sleeve. Mm -hmm. um, so this one's about halfway done at this point. Um, maybe a little over halfway. So... How do you feel about all of the seaming work you're going to have to do on this one? I'm not super excited about it because I feel like it's already a pretty um, thick sweater and the seaming is going to add a lot more thickness and weight to it, but mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. I seamed the shoulders um, and there's some pretty thick seams in there, but I feel like also the seaming might be needed to help with the structural integrity, you know, to help support everything, whereas if you knit it in the round in that yarn it might be yeah it heavy. Would just drag everything down what um, kind of stitch did you use to uh seam the shoulders i think just a mattress i'm not so great with the sewing as we've discussed I like did try and um like pin it so that for them to try and line up yeah you know the different cables and stuff like that they're slightly off but you know, no one's gonna Look so that closely you at tried it. to line it up and then you like used safety pins? Yeah, or like um, my uh, uh, lockable stitch markers. Mm. Just put those through the loops that I needed to match up. That's smart. So I have a guide as yeah. I'm sewing. I do it. Okay, I'm going to try that <laughs> next time. Because when I've done it, I've just been like, you know, mm. you know me. Just mm. let's see where this takes me. And it's very wonky mm. very off and yeah. then i'm always like well i'll just uh i'll just catch it up up here and mm. then you end up with like that pucker uh -huh. you know but yeah i always do even if it's just like a straight one i'll always do one at the very end and one in the middle just mm -hmm. so i have like mile markers to kind of get to you know so if you if you're off you can kind of see you're off by the time you get to the middle and correct it and then see you're off by the time you get to the end so it's not like that's such One a good giant pro tip. At yeah, the end. no, that's me. I'm a giant correction at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make up 15 stitches mm. in three. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> we're, I don't know. So yeah, okay. I'm going to try that next time. That's oh. a good tip. Um, so, yeah, that's one thing. Um, I did frog the ataraxia. Right. Um, because the yarn just wasn't showing the pattern um the way i th think it needed to so then i am now reusing the yarn for the christabel um so this is the back panel this is where i'm at right now i had i was at a stopping point because i ran out of yarn so i just got a bunch more last weekend did you get the full amount so you can no, like run through no i'm only i have about half okay. i think i think i've got i bought four or five last week and I had one and I think I need 10 to do it all so mm -hmm. but um yeah just working my way through so you per since you purchased you are purchasing these at different times mm -hmm. um are you at all concerned about the color lots changing or are you just going to deal with it I'll just deal with it so the one I just cast on here um is the same dye lot as the one the original one I had mm -hmm. and then the other four I have are a different dye lot and so I think um, we'll see if I can finish the back panel with this one if I if I if it looks like I'm not going to be able to then I'll start doing the alternating thing with the new dye lot but the yarn has so much variation in it already that I don't think you know it's gonna be that crazy if the dye lots off a little bit I had to do a dog swap there Oh, he doesn't want to do it. Okay. They're just going to breathe into the microphone, and I'm very <laughs> sorry about it, but they, they're they just having a minute. Okay, so I finished the comfort zone in this glorious, glorious purple. It's awesome. Poncho. This is the Grimace Poncho. The Grimace Poncho. But I really like it. 
not the color, uh-huh. but like the way it is. The, the garment. Yeah. So. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. Is it uh, still working? I don't know if it's still recording. Ah. Yeah, it's still recording. Okay. So I'm just going to pop in back here. Yeah. We're going to do the full length reveal back there. Okay, so. I'm kind of short. I don't know if you can see me. Yeah. But this is the comfort zone poncho. What I really love about it is it's a poncho. I just love ponchos. Mm -hmm. Um, So, like, this little side seam. Do I have a side seam in the right spot? Here we go. (laughs) This little side seam is a really nice detail. I like the length I chose for the turtleneck. It's just three. Oh, my gosh. Stop doing that. I am going to dye it. I got the dye. I had to buy the, I'm not gonna dig around for it. I had to buy the um, powder dye because they won't ship me the liquid dye. Mm -hmm. Don't know why. Something about maybe the state of California, I don't know. But they would not do it. So this is it. It's. A beautiful pattern. It's a beautiful um, silhouette, I think. Mm-hmm. I wore it out at night when I thought that the purple wouldn't be too obvious. And I really love it. Highly recommend it. You're going to see this again once I dye it purple. I mean, black. I'm going to dye it black. Nice. So we had pandemonium. <laughs> That's why we're talking so fast. Because one, the card's going to die. Uh-huh. Two, these dogs just like had a meltdown. Mm-hmm and there's beer on the floor, and <laughs> everything has gone wrong. So, that's it. Okay, Okay. what do you got? Um, I was gonna talk about, I swatched for the Bell Cardi. Um, so these were my two swatches. Um, mm-hmm. And oh yeah, we didn't talk about this. Yeah. So, so last think, time you had three colors, a blue, right. a red, and this, this guy. And um, I decided not to do the blue, sorry. Um, and so I swatched out of these two remaining colors, and I think I'm going to go with the red. Guys, So that's guys. what's been decided. And I think we're done. Back up! Is that it? Are you guys really going to do this? Okay, you're playing. Please don't knock over anything else. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was the worst! <laughs> They're, like, having this weird mating dance of, like, are they going to fight? Are they going to have fun? Uh And, like, stop doing this. And then a car drives by, and they're both like, oh, what's that? (gasps) This has been the worst. So this started off with uh, Argus jumping on me and pulling out a thread Uh on my um, swing back. Mm -hmm. And then Marika spent, like, 45 minutes fixing it. To proceed to when I put this thing on, you, oh, Gordon starts peeing on something in here, <laughs> then Argus started peeing on something in here, then the beer gets knocked over. It's just pandemonium. <laughs> and then this weird dance just happened. Uh-huh. Okay, so I feel like this is <laughs> ah. the least cohesive. We were having such a good, like, really mm-hmm. tight thing, and now it's the least cohesive, like, conversation over mm-hmm. your bell cardi yeah well you're gonna do it in the red yeah we picked the red we'll see how it goes the pink was like a doily it just didn't the way the the pattern um the variety and the dye um knitted up with the pattern just didn't do it for me so we'll see i still love the color so we'll figure something else out for it i think that's it we did it. We made it. I think that's mine. Yeah, you you have like ten ten sips in there. Okay. So <sighs> happy knitting. Happy knitting. <laughs> These dogs are killing me. 